science is not a luxury that comes after security, after agriculture, after health. But it is the road to achieve what you want in security, in agriculture, and in health. Scientists here in the room uh, will agree with me that science is a very serious business. We are here to celebrate science, the transformative power of science in Africa. We are here today to celebrate the contributions of Africa to global science. And we are here to celebrate the achievement of some of Africa's brightest mind and scientific minds. Over 50% of the participants at NEF are under 42 years old and almost half are women. I just tick some of these boxes, but that's the signal we want to send. This is how the future looks like. You are the future. This hall is full of internationalism, optimism, and the desire to reclaim uh, the tradition of science uh, in Africa. C'est pourquoi le NEF doit garder toute sa vitalité et sa dynamique the catalyzer of the progress scientific and technical on the continent African. So why is Science Week so important? At its course, Science Week inspires Africa's next generation into scientific fields. It generates curiosity, promotes learning, and creates appreciation for the value of science to society. It is important for our innovators to know how to manage the transition from the idea to the market. It's not only a question of technology, it's also a question of financial viability of our solution. It's a massive disruption for existing companies. We have hundreds and hundreds of, of partners and thousands of customers around the continent. We're spending a lot of time to help them understand what the digital transformation means, that it's not coming sometime in the future, but it's here, how to prepare for it and translate it into a business opportunity. There's three billion people in the world that have zero access to surgery. And the idea is that you're not gonna train enough surgeons to actually be able to create access to all those people. But technology is enabling for us to remotely do surgery through robotics, through artificial intelligence. My question is, can we emulate breathing to create a robust energy infrastructure for everybody, everywhere, where we never have to worry about the fuel supply? Yes, we can do, and this is the goal of my research. You cannot uh, create great program or great system without being individual, uh, people-centered without prediction of what you may expect and without wanting to prevent the disease they will face. The cardiopath is a medical device that is used to perform heart examination and remote diagnosis. The device combines the features of a complete 12-lead ECG device and a data transmission modem. We have just filed a provisional patent for a rapid, affordable and non-invasive device that can accurately detect malaria. At Philips, we developed a biosensor to detect various types of drugs of abuse in saliva. At that time, I was thinking, maybe you can use saliva to detect oral cancers. You can also detect, uh, use saliva to detect um, heart diseases. When an African farmer dies, a library goes with her. So we're 
keeping the germplasm of our plants, we're even storing them in the Svalbard gene bank in, in Norway, but are we keeping the knowledge of agriculture that is in the library and the heads of African farmers? We want sustainability because we want to be producing more food with less resources that are used, meaning land, labor, water, pesticides, energy, chemicals. If you achieve to do that, then we are going on a trajectory of sustainable food systems. If we started talking to each other, building partnerships within the agricultural sector in Africa, there's an opportunity to go further than where we are going currently. We are about to unveil the Scientific African Journal. In addition, the quality of output is also rising steadily and is now, across the whole of Africa, very close to the world average, with a few notable countries which stand significantly ahead of the world average. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a microgrid power system from maize cobs. We are generating electricity, light, from maize. I was working in a laboratory, I'm an experimentalist, and I saw something, and within 10 minutes or so, I saw something which was new. To have the freedom to follow then a new direction, this was very important for me. In Africa, people become scientists by a consequence of accidents. And one thing that I feel very strongly about is that we need to create a straight world so that people who want to do this have like a way to do it that doesn't involve picking people trash. First of all, understand that our kids are all scientists and then learn to identify the kinds of things that they do in fundamentally scientific ways and try to encourage them in that direction. If you had been Mark Zuckerberg today, you had 20 years old, what would you like to create as an application? Maybe indeed I shouldn't be a Zuckerberg but I should be one who can enable others to become Zuckerberg. <laughs> Gender gap in the field of science is huge. We have all sorts of excuses to explain this, but no excuse is valid enough. What if we started leadership training for girls who because of social and cultural obstacles may never join science. Until we have equal opportunities for education, equal opportunities for career advancement, equal opportunities for leadership positions, and equal pay, we will never bridge the gap. One day things will change. INEF has decided to make sure that women are not left behind. Gender Summit Africa is going to partner with the NEF. We're looking forward to, to hosting you in, uh, uh, in Nairobi.